Welcome back guys. In today's video, Mark asks, why don't I use GoDaddy hosting? Referring to our how to make a WordPress website with GoDaddy video, where we register a domain at GoDaddy and use HostGator for the hosting because it's a little bit cheaper in the long term and because they offer better services for hosting because they specialize in web hosting. So I wanted to go into a little bit more depth and explain what that means when someone says that a company offers better services. What are we talking about? And why don't we just use GoDaddy hosting in the video and in general when we set up a GoDaddy domain? All right, so let's do it. So the services come down to a few factors. And at the end, I'm going to show you an article written by the experts at WPMU Dev that explains why your domains and WordPress should be kept separate, meaning you should get your domains at point A and WordPress hosting at point B. Whatever they are, they should be different locations. So I'll leave you with this. But first, I just want to dive into the services that I'll, I'll usually say that HostGator offers better, better hosting services. Let's take a look at what you get when you sign up for hosting with HostGator versus when you use hosting at GoDaddy. So it's pretty simple. At HostGator, you're going to get this customer portal where you can do a lot of hosting tasks. It's all very modern and updated. And you also get the control panel with a new design they've given us called Paper Lantern and a lot of different icons and tools. Build a new WordPress site, for example. You get a whole section for domains where you can add more domains to your account called add-on domains. You can create subdomains like blog.yourwebsite.com and so on and so forth. Like I said, this is an updated window here. This is an updated screen. And HostGator put a lot of resources and time into creating a better user experience right here with their new control panel. It's really awesome. Before this, there was an older version of the HostGator control panel that you'll see in my older tutorials. And even that was really good. It worked to set up WordPress. It worked to set up an email address using their email accounts. It worked for the add-on domains, for doing file manager, which is FTP, and so on and so forth. Even that older version worked. Now let's jump over and see what GoDaddy offers for web hosting. And by the way, these are both the basic options. At HostGator, I'm running either a hatchling or a baby plan. And at GoDaddy here, you get their basic economy plan or the deluxe plan. So it's nothing fancy either way. So we're comparing the cheapest plans. Working with GoDaddy hosting here, we can quickly see that there's not as many options here in their hosting dashboard, you could call it. We can install WordPress. That's pretty easy to do, but everything looks a little bit out of date. It's slower, as we can see. They haven't even updated their descriptions. And if we, by the way, when you click install, it takes much longer than it does at HostGator. If you look at the other options, um, you're just going to see outdated buttons. And what I did before was I tried to create an add-on domain at GoDaddy. They don't even have an option for add-on domains. They're called hosted domains, which must be an older term. Um, however, if you look up a tutorial at GoDaddy, like how to add a domain, they'll refer to add-on domains. So their tutorials don't even match their icons and their services. I know I'm being critical here, but the basic reality is GoDaddy hasn't updated their hosting control panel right here in a long time. What they have updated is their homepage and their front end that helps you buy domain names and makes it really easy to do that. I can't stress how frustrating it was when they kept telling me to click add on domains and I had to actually click hosted domains to add another domain name here. And it's all really archaic. Along the line of services, when I pulled up the live chat at GoDaddy and tried to ask one of their domain experts how to install WordPress on a new domain name, they couldn't even tell me how to do it because that was a hosting task and I had to talk to a hosting expert instead of a domain expert. Whereas at HostGator, if you bring up the live chat, they'll sit with you and walk you through both domain names and hosting issues, no matter who the tech support person is. Ultimately, I think it boils down to HostGator investing more in the web hosting product and also offering domains, whereas GoDaddy invests a ton in their domain name products and also offers hosting. That's one of the points I made in our GoDaddy website video is that if you want to get a product, unless you really need to get it quickly um, and just for a short period of time, 
you should get that product, whether it's a domain name or web hosting from the specialist. So I do recommend getting GoDaddy domain names and getting HostGator hosting. And I hope that little explanation helps you understand what we mean when we say that one has better services than the other. Now to finish with our article from the good folks at WPMU Dev. Not sure I said that right. But we're going to talk about a little bit from the article just so you know why they think your domains and WordPress should be kept separate. There are 10 points here, but my favorite ones are cost. Um, so when you buy a domain name from GoDaddy, you can get discounts on it, which is really great. And when you buy hosting from a place like HostGator, you can get hosting coupons and you can reduce the cost in that way. So another part of this article I really want to uh, point you to is reliable support. Um, when you get your domains, they should be regulated by ICANN. Um, hosting usually isn't, so that's something to consider. They go on to say if something goes wrong with your site and you also got your domain name from the same company, the only place you can turn to is your host. Basically what that means, and it's happened to me, is that if your domain expires, you want to be able to deal with someone who um, speaks with ICANN so they can help you retrieve it. Um, it's really difficult to retrieve a domain name. So basically you want that ICANN accredited registrar for your domain name and a perfect place for that is GoDaddy because they'll help you if it gets lost or if they need to bring ICANN into the picture. So moving downwards, the last part of this article I want you to check out is security. So it's possible your site gets hacked throughout its lifetime, especially if it becomes popular. Big blogs like Smart Passive Income have been hacked. Um, the nice thing is if you have your domain and you're hosting at different places, if they hack one of them, as you might have guessed, they don't get both of them. As they say, instead of having to hack multiple accounts, they would only need to hack one, whereas spreading your resources out won't guarantee you won't get hacked, um, but you can make it more difficult for hackers. Um, all right, so they paint a pretty bleak picture, but basically um, people can hack into WordPress if you run WordPress, and if that domain is registered somewhere where they, they can't get into it through your WordPress, um, if you have hosting and domain separate, then they can't get to your domain through WordPress. All right, the article is definitely worth reading all the way through. Um, lastly, we have number 10, which says, uh, many hosting companies offer free domains when you purchase hosting. One that comes to mind is Bluehost. There, they offer that free domain name to incentivize you to sign up for their hosting. Um, what this means is, th is that the free domain may rest under their control since the company is registered as the owner of the domain. Well, you're only the admin who can manage it. Um, this means you could end up in a long battle for ownership. Um, if you decide you want to switch, and it's a possibility you could lose your domain in the end, or at least they'll make it harder to switch from. So if you register your domain name at GoDaddy, for example, it's really easy to point your domain to you know, a different host or an upgraded host or the host you used originally um, and then point it somewhere else. You can, you can do whatever you want, but if you get that free domain name uh, from somewhere like Bluehost, then it could be harder to move it to a different host if you want to do that. Um, you know, just because it gets touchy when they, they, you know, might not like that you're switching hosts. Let's have you avoid that situation if at all possible. All right, before we go into any more detail, I'm going to end the video and I'm going to leave you these links uh, that we've talked about here, as well as a written explanation of um, everything that was covered in the video, or at least the key points in the video description below. All right, so I hope that explains a little bit of why you don't want to use GoDaddy hosting and generally why you don't want your domain name and your hosting from the same providers or the same registrars. All right, thanks to Mark for inspiring this video and thanks so much for watching because I really enjoy making these for you guys. Please make sure to hit subscribe so that you see the answer to your question if you're featured next time and so that you get all the latest in WordPress tutorials and tips. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.